Right. Let me show you what we did here. Uh, this last one we just finished. Um, it was obvious it was not going forward because I had 0 0.200 moles of this and 0 of that. And for the ones we did before this, it was obvious it was going forward and not reverse because I was given maybe you know, 0.17 here and 0.2 here and 0 of that. All right, but what about if I gave you crazy numbers that you couldn't tell what was what, like I'm going to do in the next example? You would have to find what's called, whoops, what's called the reaction quotient. That would tell us which way it's going to go. And I'll show you how you can figure out which way it's going to go. we're going to be dividing? You'll see. It's the reaction quotient, turns out, is very familiar. Look at the definition of the reaction quotient. It's simply the ratio of the forward and reverse rates, Kf over Kr. Is that not also the definition of Kc? It is. The difference, so what's the difference between Q, which is the reaction quotient, and Kc? Well, the difference is Q is not necessarily at equilibrium. But they are identical. They're calculated the same exact way. It's just that they're not necessarily, quote, the reaction quotient's not necessarily at equilibrium. So if I find Q and compare him to KC, I can tell which way the reaction's going to go. That's my job, okay? It's the same as KC, only the concentrations I'm going to plug in are not necessarily at equilibrium. What do I use this for? to be able to predict whether he's going to go forward or reverse. It was obvious. Well, you've got a zero on one side. I think that happens one of the homework problems tonight. You don't have to solve for Q. For Q. If I've got a zero on one side and numbers on the other side, concentration on the other side, I know it's got to go that way. I know it's got to go towards the zero because I can't get less than zero. Okay? But it's when I'm going to tell you, hey, these are the concentrations at equilibrium for A, B, C, and D. And I don't know which way it's going to go. You better figure that out, okay? Uh, that's going to predict the, the, the rate, which, I mean, the um, direction it's going to go. Which one's going to dominate? Which one's going to predominate? Go faster than the other one. <laughs> All right, so that's basically the notes. Let's talk about the three possibilities of what could happen. Well, the first one's the easiest, okay, before I write it down here on the board. If I plug my numbers in for the concentration I'm given, and it comes out to be Q is the same as KC, where am I? I'm at equilibrium, okay? So the three possibilities, if Q equals KC, you know you're at equilibrium. So that'll be easy, and that may happen, but probably won't in the homework tonight. It's going to ask you which way is favored. So, and I didn't put the homework up there yet, but it's going to be up here in a second. Great, more homework. Yeah, I love it. Did you have a class on this yet? Yeah, they just did today. They didn't have homework? Uh, they did, I just forgot to put it up. I said I didn't put it up there yet. It'll be on here, though. That's the reason I put it up. It's actually, I incorporated it into the PowerPoint. All right, so if Q is equal to KC, it's at equilibrium. Now, the next two, I made a point of yelling at Shania about this, even though she hadn't done anything yet. I was preemptively yelling at her. I'm going to preemptively yell at Lizzie today. Lizzie is one of those people who wants to always ask, so is it always this? If this, we always going to do this? She always wants that always question because she wants to memorize. Now, you can. You can absolutely memorize if Q is less than KC, it does one thing, and if Q is greater than KC, it does something else. But I'm going to tell you not to do that. And I'm not just saying that as a casual, you know, like, oh, this is what you should do as, as a student. I'm saying as a teacher I do this. I don't memorize a lot of stuff. I think about it, all right? I don't know right now until I think about it what's going to happen here. But here's what I'm going to remember. It's Kf over Kr. That's what Q equals. Don't write this down. Watch. Q equals Kf over Kr, all right? And that's what Kc also equals. Now, let me ask you something. If I found Q to be, let's just make up some numbers. I do this all the time for problems to make sure I'm doing it right. Let's say I find Q is equal to 5. Again, you're not writing this down. And KC actually equals 10. In order for 5 to become 10, keeping in mind that both of them are KF over KR, use your head. Don't memorize. What has to get bigger for 5 to become 10? The numerator or the denominator has to become bigger? The denominator. The numerator. How can you get bigger with the denominator? Yeah. 
the numerator has to get bigger, or the denominator has to get smaller, or both, right? Okay, so that tells me which guy's favored. If Q is less than KC, like 5 is less than 10, and I want it to become 10, what's going to happen? I'm going to favor the forward in order for that to happen. So I'm using common sense to figure this out, rather than just memorizing, okay, whenever Q is less than KC, it favors the forward. Whenever Q is greater, and that's what most, not most, but, few, but that's what a lot of people like to do. They want to memorize things instead of understanding them. Okay, if I don't memorize, if, I, if you do memorize this, it's going to be gone right after the test is gone. Okay, you're not going to remember that. If I ask you, but if, if you understand that they're both K over KR, a year from now, you can figure out, okay, well, if he's smaller and I want him to become bigger, that's what's going to happen. And if he's bigger, let's think about that. Let's reverse it. Say the number I gave you for KC is, all right, KC is 20. All right, I'm bigger than that. I'm 40. I want to become 20, and I'm a ratio of KF over KR. What has to happen for 40 to become 20? Well, either this guy's got to get bigger, or that guy's got to get smaller in order for 40 to become 20, right? All right, so that's why it's going to favor the reverse. So again, I'm just saying this, and I do this a lot with you guys. I could have taught that to you by just giving you the notes, and most people would. But I'm, I'm do this so you understand it, so you try to apply it, rather than just memorize it. And I've done that a billion times, more so in the Chem 2. How many times have we done that with equations? Delta H equals MC delta T. Delta G equals uh, delta H minus T delta S. It's better if you understand it rather than just memorize it. All right, good enough. And here's your homework. Copy that down. I'll put it over on the board in a minute. Uh, but i got to do an example for this. I'm going to do an example, but copy that homework down in the homework section. Real quick. Uh, All why even ask? No, I need to know if he's going to be the paper. Yeah, but you know, as long you know as he's going to be Okay, copy that down. Quick, right? This. You still didn't copy that down. Thank you. I still can copy. All right. Now, let's do one example. And this example uh, is not going to take, by the way, you're going to find that these problems are a lot easier because I'm just, I'm going to go further with it tomorrow. But right now, I'm just going to ask you which way will he go, forward or reverse. So it's a very simple problem. Watch. Copy this guy down. Copy on the blackboard? I'm using white because of the, the, the TV. Yeah. We all know. Mm -hmm. It really does show up better, I think. Not necessarily on here for you guys to read, but for the YouTube video. All right. There are times I'm going to go back to the whiteboards. I have to. Are we doing a full-blown problem here? Uh, yeah, but it's really a, a not anywhere near as long as the last couple we've been doing. You'll see why in a minute. All right, now let me show you why this is actually uh, a lot easier. First of all, and why I do want to make this point as we go on, I am going to stop giving us two liter containers, five liter containers, and, and, and moles and even grams because I'll be teaching you more difficult, more lo longer problems. So I don't want to have to start out by dividing by two or dividing by the size of the container every single time. That doesn't mean you're not going to see them on the test or in the homework. You will. But the problems I'm going to give you from now on, most of them are probably going to already be in molarity, so you can just plug them right in to make the new stuff a little bit easier. What happens is people forget it by the time a test comes around. we got another good week worth of stuff in our lab to do, and we have a lot more stuff to do. Pro volume, pressure changes, we have quite a bit to do before the end of this chapter. By the end of this uh, chapter, you'll have forgotten about not dividing by the size of the container. So I'm just telling you that right now. I'm going to get away from that just to, to get the new stuff in. Uh, HI's concentration is told to be 0 0.500 more. H2's concentration is 2.80 more. And I2's concentration is 3.40 more. Okay? Now, I want you to skip yourself, not a big deal, just skip yourself like one line here. And I want, because I want to go back to that in a little bit and show you something. Not that it's actually even part of the question. However, I want to go back and show you something to hint ahead to tomorrow. 
All right, uh, so skip yourself about one line or maybe two, depending on how big you write, and let's solve this problem for Q. How are we going to do Q? What's Q going to equal? I need an equation. What's Q's equation going to look like? It's going to be the exact same equation as KC. It's going to be products raised to their coefficients over the reactants raised to this coefficient. So it's going to be H2 times I2 over HI squared. Now, after that, you know what to do. We're going to plug our numbers in. H2's concentration is, look how easy this is. This is a lot easier to solve it for x. 2.80 molar times 3.40 molar divided by 0 0.500 molar. Is that correct? Yep. No. No. It's squared. Yeah, it's squared. Don't forget, people forget the squared function all the time. Yeah, guys. All right, get your calculator out, do the math for that, see what you get. Again, nothing very difficult here compared to what we had been doing. What'd you get, Lizzie? 5.5. That's the top. That's the top. That's the nineteen point five. Nineteen point oh four. I got nineteen point oh four. Oh shit. I didn't square. I don't is that right? Nineteen point oh four? No, wait, no, no. I don't no. think so. You didn't square. 38.08. That date, I can always rely on date. 38.1? Oh That's because you told me what to do. 38.1. I didn't tell. I did not say what. Yeah, you said you forgot to the square. Then you told me the Oh, I didn't I tell did him. Not, I told I her that. Hey, by the way, what are my units? Molars. There are none. Molar squared <laughs> over molar <laughs> squared <laughs> is not <laughs> <time. laughs> just random units. Okay, so, well, that's, remember what we said about constants. Constants often have ugly units. In the case of uh, rate law constants and equilibrium constants, they don't even have the same units depending on what equation you're talking about. All right. So, um, they, in other words, different equations have different units. 38.1, that's Q, right? How does that compare to KC, which is 65? Well, <coughs> it's, oops, I just went the wrong way. it's less than, right? Okay. It's less than that guy. 65.0. So therefore, the what does that tell you? It's going to favor the forward. And that's all you would have to write. Okay? And you'd be done at this point. It's all you have to write for your homework. However, I told you to leave yourself some lines here. Here's why. What we're going to learn tomorrow, and we're going to apply it to concentration changes, volume changes, and pressure changes, is once we've figured out Q, we're going to have to go back to a problem sometimes and then do another equilibrium problem after that. What's the point of doing Q? Simply to tell where the minus x's go and where the plus x's go. If I'm favoring the forward at the, from this point on, what will it look like up here? What would I have to put on this side? Minus, minus what? 2x, good. Over here, you don't have to write that. You can write it in there, uh, but it's not like I'm not asking you to do this in this problem. Plus x and plus x, and then you would continue to get the rest of the problem done. But I'm not going to ask you that for the homework tonight. Okay? That's just to solve for Q at this point.